Hey guys, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Blowers. Today, a major step in the progress on the go-kart project. As you know from a previous episode, <laughs> previous six or seven episodes about this, I'm taking it slow because I'm out of my element. Uh, last episode, we removed the pulley from the new engine, the Honda. 340 the GX 340 engine which runs great we got that running new carburetor cleaned up the gas tank and all that removed the pulley from it and we found out that it does indeed have threads in the crankshaft so that that's all good uh, next step is to remove the centrifugal clutch from this engine right and uh, you can't get it off because if it took me all day to get that little tiny pulley off of that engine there's no way I'm going to get this big, 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 thick pulley off of this engine, you know? The only way to possibly get it off is to remove the engine, which I'm going to do anyway. Let me show you what's, uh, what I'm looking at. So I've been looking it over a little bit. Um, looks like the starter generator is on its own frame bracket that's separated from the engine, which is good. There might be one bolt that's attached to the engine block. I know there's probably four bolts on the bottom up. Gonna have to remove these um, belts. This one looks like it could slip off the transmission pulley by just turning it. There we go. That was easy. Good belt. See that it has grids or teeth on it? Really heavy duty belt. Those things I want to sell locally for very cheap. Uh, I couldn't get any of them started. This engine runs, but I can't find the carburetor. There are two that I found that look kind of like the original one. They're like uh, one's $11, the other one's like $20. The $20 one has a choke lever, the other one doesn't. I have a feeling if I buy the one that doesn't have it, I'm going to have trouble starting it because it doesn't have a choke. I don't know why they make them without the chokes. Uh, next thing I want to do is I want to disconnect the muffler from the engine because I might want to try to make that muffler fit on the new Honda. So I have to remove that first. Get the muffler out of the way. Looks like there's two bolts that go from the transmission bolted to the engine. Those two. Then there's four on the bottom, I believe. I haven't crawled down there because I'm kind of scared. I'm scared to crawl down there because if this thing fell on me, I would I would totally be done ski. And I have two jack stands and the hydraulic jack underneath the differential. But I don't know. I just I'm nervous about going under there. You know. Anyway, so uh, let me loosen the bolts for the muffler and try to get the muffler out got to do my due diligence and at least try to put some penetrating oil first in case I have to take this bracket off too half inch impact a little slow. Moving. One. Can't get there. This is in the way. easy. <laughs> Just jinxed it. Got one more here for the bracket. It's 9 sixteenths I believe. No. Probably a millimeter thing. Oh, one inch. Looks different. <clears throat> Yay! Alright, that was that was good. Easier than I expected, to be honest with you. I mean, it's a muffler, for goodness sakes. Oh, man, that's heavy. That's a 
heavy muffler, but it's a big muffler, you know? Good condition too. Even though it's a huge muffler, right? Look at the input. Input's good, right? Then it goes into this huge heavy duty muffler. And it comes out this little tiny little exhaust pipe at the end, tailpipe. Interesting. Five eighths with a wrench and a wrench. I learned this trick on YouTube, believe it or not. <laughs> Your five eighths wrench is too short. Get another wrench to hook onto it, and it actually moved. It's uh, too tight to get a. Um, it's too tight to get an impact in there or a socket. Something's in the way. While you can get the socket in there, you won't have any space to uh, turn the ratchet. Very tight. That's what she said. I can get a. I can get an impact in here this side it's not moving Just move the extension you get better torque when you remove the extension but then you may not have room uh, it looks like it'll work hopefully there we go look at the size of that bolt that attaches the engine to the transmission. I'm going to slowly wrench that one off. Two bolts on the bottom from the transmission to the engine block is removed. Now we have that bolt right there that's attached to it and that bolt right there that's attached to this. The starter bracket is attached to the engine. Uh, for me to get access to that, I'm gonna have to remove the starter. Okay, so uh, I went underneath the thing. There's a there's a, like a, a pan, door pan, not a door pan, a pan, <laughs> and it had two big bolts attached to it. And it looks like those are the only two that were hanging onto it. I've got this uh, ground strap I need to loosen, and then it looks like it is free. It's free. The linkages, I hope I remember where they go 
It's a good thing why I'm a YouTuber, because everything is on video. Okay, I've loosened the ground strap, removed the fuel line to the pulse. It looks like it's completely free. I wonder how heavy this is. <clears throat> Got no place to hold it. Oh, oh! Ooh. All right, looks like I'm gonna be able to pull this out. Don't want to wrench the back, right? Gotta get some good leverage. Oh. Nice edge. Nice. Removed my very first golf cart engine. Never done it before. That's the pan that I was talking about. It had two bolts holding the engine onto it. And basically, you could have put four, but there was only two. So it's a four point mount on the engine, two here for the transmission, two on the side from the uh, starter generator bracket. A lot of uh, linkages such as the ground strap, the uh, stator wire, ground wire, fuel pump pulse line, uh, throttle linkages, to the carburetor too. But other than that, it was a, uh, yeah, I guess it's like a 10 or 12 point mount. So it's quite a, quite a bit to remove the engine. But here it is right there. That's a Wisconsin Robin Subaru Fuji Industries engine. The flywheel, ignition coil. That's the carburetor that I spent 40 bucks on, which will probably now go to waste. The throttle bracket that I made to make the choke work. Since I'm not going to use this engine, it's going to go to waste. I was wondering where all the oil was coming from. Because when I was rotating this engine, it, it leaked oil. So, I, As you can see here, somebody's been in here. This engine's been rebuilt. See, this is not a factory stock gasket. This is, this is a RTV silicone. So that's probably what was leaking is out of this. Uh, so this, this engine's no good. I mean, who knows if the timing was correct. If you take a look at it over here, this is the, I want to say the camshaft uh, timing. And it, it's all bent out of shape here. So somebody's been trying to get this off or got it off and put it back on. But who knows if the timing is correct, you know? So that's another reason why it probably wasn't getting any spark too. It's too much unknown about this engine, you know? But uh, I needed to take this engine off so I can get this centrifugal uh, clutch pulley off of this uh, crankshaft because I need this to put on the new engine. And it'll be really difficult to do, I'm sure. What I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put it on its uh, vertically like this. As you can see, this is the bolt that attaches onto the um, pulley. I found on eBay, that there's a $15 bolt, right? That is threaded here like two inches of thread there. And then from here until there, it's just a shaft, no threads. So I think the logic behind that is, once it does grip onto the threads, right? You turn it and turn it and turn it, and it pulls the clutch off of the crankshaft. But I don't know because I see. Yeah, okay, so the threads here, so if I get bigger threads there and start to do it, you turn it, you turn it, you turn it, and it pulls the clutch off. So I think I'm gonna try to, you know, remove it by hand. 
which is probably impossible. <clears throat> and then I'll probably have to buy that removal bolt. To add more drama to my project, this is the crankshaft clutch bolt off of that Fuji engine. It's too wide <laughs> for the uh, Honda. It's too big. So I know this one fits. Yeah, this one sort of fits. It stops after two turns. That's a huge difference. We'll get to that problem when we really get to it. Gotta clean out my garage again, man. I got nowhere to, nowhere to work. I just cleaned my garage. You know what I mean? When you do this stuff every day, the garage gets dirty really fast. So here, see? When this spins very quickly, this thing goes in, grips the belt, turns the transmission. Yeah, right. Well, this acts like a uh, like a vent puller, you know? Gives it the uh, that that bang, maybe jar it loose. Yeah, that's not gonna come off. I might have to buy that tool, fellas. And I'm gonna put it on its uh, head. So that I could spray penetrating oil in there and have gravity pull it down into the shaft. So, you guys see what I mean? Just completely flood that area of the shaft with penetrating oil. Let it sit for a few days. See if that penetrating oil makes it down the shaft somehow. And I guess I'm gonna have to buy that tool. What are you gonna do? It's the only way to get the, the clutch off. Clutch is worth uh, a couple hundred bucks. Uh, that's what I've seen on, on the internet. So I need this clutch. I'm not gonna go and buy one, you know? Gotta get this off somehow. So to invest $15 in the tool that will maybe get it off easier than uh, damaging it, trying to get it off, then I think that maybe the shaft might be a different size than the Honda one, which, which I would need to get a bolt that would fit the Honda shaft plus an adapter, kind of like a filler sleeve that goes onto that because I have a feeling that Honda shaft is like a three-fourths or something. And this might be a one inch. They make adapters for it with the keyway in there. So I might have to do that. But like I said, a long-term project, but at least we got the engine out today. That's a big step. That's a little piece of it, fellas. Getting the engine out today. It's a big step. Pretty stoked. Uh, it went without a hitch, which is good. I might buy a carburetor for this thing after all. Because I'm curious as to see whether or not it would work, you know? I know the engine runs on this. You just need the right carburetor. I think I found one that'll work, so I'm going to get it. It's gonna cost me twenty dollars, but uh, and also if I if it, that does work, I need to get a cover for this too. That's like another fifteen dollars. So yeah, that's not really worth it to spend thirty-five dollars on that thing. Maybe I'll buy the ten-dollar one. That's it. <laughs> you know, risk ten dollars to get it running. That's not too bad. Maybe I'll do that. Uh, that is, if nobody buys it like today or tomorrow, or whatever, you know. Uh, but anyway. Getting the engine out of here, big step. 
Gonna order the tool also to get the clutch off. But uh, like I said, uh, long-term deal on this golf cart. Uh, don't know if the Honda's gonna just fit right in there like that, you know? Uh, anyway, thanks a lot for joining me on today's golf cart episode. We'll see you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey guys, John with Turning Wrenches, 85. See you guys next time on Mowers and Blowers. Hey, if you guys enjoyed the video, remember to give me a like. Also, comment below. Subscribe. Remember, it doesn't cost anything to subscribe. It's free, right? Also, hit that little bell. That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook, as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.